Today we're going to talk about how to install the TMC5160 Pro. Now I have two different types of TMC5160s here. The one right here does not do sensorless homing. It's the non-pro version. And then we have the pro version that does. And what I mean by that is it has the actual sensor pins for being able to do sensorless homing. So this will not include a end stop when using the access. So I'm just gonna remove this so that you know that it's not part of the solution and that it can use the end stop functionality of overcurrent with the TMC5160 Pro. So let me outline a couple of things real quick here. We have our extruder being E0. We have our X axis, our Y axis, and our Z axis. So we're gonna work with the X axis and we have to find out what the jumper pins are going to be for the configuration, as well as we've gotta set the actual end stop functionality with the overcurrent with a jumper cap over here. So I'm gonna go over to the actual uh, manual for the uh, TMC5160 configuration on the Manta version 2.1, and I'll show you that real quick. So over here, we have the actual configuration for UART, which it is not. It is SPI, which is Serial Peripheral Interface. So you can see that we have the TMC5160 right here. And then we have the jumper configuration that's going to be these four sets of pins that we need to put jumper caps on. If you scroll down a little bit further, you can see that there's an actual diag sensor for sensorless homing, which is right here. If you decide not to use this jumper cap, then you can use an end stop. So let's set that up. So if we go over here, I'm going to have to use some tweezers because this is kind of hard to do from a distance. So I'm going to first put the jumper cap in for sensorless homing over here. Then I'm going to have to put the jumper caps in for the actual spy configuration, which will be down in here. So it's these four sets of pins that we need to set these for. So this might take a second to actually configure. And uh, just so you know, I actually have a playlist of configurations for this board that will be in the description of the actual tutorial. And I'd like to take a moment to thank my Patreon subscribers as well as my PayPal subscribers. And at the very end of the tutorial, I'll put a thank you note to them. Okay, so we've got those all in. Next, we have to note the actual configuration. So you can see there's a red side and a black side. So if we look at this, we have yellow on one side and we have black. So we're just gonna insert it right here. And that's all we have to do to set up the actual TMC5160 Pro with sensorless homing mechanically. So I'm going to insert this here, and then I'm going to power this board on. So this can take a second to actually boot. So while that's booting, what I'm going to do is take you over to the desktop, and we're going to go to the Clipper documentation. So for this configuration, what we need to know is the actual configuration setup. So as you can see, I'm going into here. So let's see if we can find the reference to it. So we're looking for TMC5160. So here we go. So as you can see, this is the normal configuration. And we're going to have to know what the pins are for this. 
So they may or may not be correct in the default configuration I'm using, which is from Manta. So if we go up here and we go back to the Big Tree Tech, we can go to firmware and the actual generic configuration is right here. So there's going to be an error in here that I've identified. Obviously the 5160 doesn't exist, but it says 5160 configuration. So we're gonna rename this to 5160. So let's see if it's actually ready in FluidPy. So I'm gonna try to reconnect and it looks like it is. So we're gonna click on the configuration, go to printer config, and obviously I have it set up and already mapped to the actual processor. So if you don't know how to do this, they're actually in the playlist, the uh, very first configuration where I do this, you can see how to set that up. So I'm gonna scroll down and I'm gonna find this configuration. So it's right here. So I'm gonna copy this for the X axis. So to copy this, I'm gonna have to use Control C then I'll scroll up and I'll paste it underneath so we can see what we're doing right here. And then I'm going to remove the comment by hitting the control forward slash. And you can see there's already an error right here. So I'm going to take that out. And then I'm going to fix this for 5160. Now we can actually click on the documentation to go to it directly. And as you can see, there's several pins that we need to know about. So I've actually pulled up the pinout diagram on the actual Big Tree Tech website right here. And so you can see that we have the X driver and we have PC7 for enable. That's the enable pin. Then we have the step pin, which is PC6, the direction pin, which is PA14, and then chip select is PD12. So, in order to configure this, we have to go over to FluidPy and we have to actually see what we've got here. So, we have the step pin right now, which is PC6. So, let's see if that matches up. So, step is PC6. Now, we're going to go over and we're going to find the direction pin, which is PA14 which is PA14. Then we have the enable pin, which is PC7. So we need the PB12 for our chip select. So let's see if we've got that correct. So chip select is gonna be right here for PB12. So it looks like we're good right there. So what do we need to fix? So if you look over here, you see that PC0 is actually the end stop pin. So in order to set this, we have a diag pin, which is PG6. This is incorrect. So this value is actually going to be moved right to here. So I'll paste this in. And then we have to actually say that this is going to be a virtual pin that will reference this pin. The other thing that we do need to do is change our actual uh, resistor sense. We need to add it in. And what I'm talking about is if we go over to the actual generic configuration that I pulled up over here, you can see there's gonna be a resistor sense in here someplace. So we've gotta find that. And so it looks like it's right here. So we're gonna have to copy this and then go back over to our configuration and paste this in. That allows us to have the correct resistor sense setting for our actual stepper. So now that we have that set, we're gonna to have to set the virtual part. So it's gonna take me a second to actually cut and paste in because it's kind of long. So I'll show you what it looks like. So I'm just gonna highlight this and I'm going to paste the actual value. So now you actually have your TMC5160 with your virtual end stop, which is going to refer to this. So this label goes to here and then it points to this value. 
So now that we've got that set up, we're actually going to save and restart. Now we need to check to see what's going on. So I'm going to have to go over here and there's actually a console where I'm going to type in what's going on for our end stop. So I'm going to type M119 and press enter. And right now all our end stops are triggered. So we know there's an issue there. So we're going to go back over to the configuration. And what we need to do is actually find the diag pin and invert the logic or negate it so that we can say that it's the opposite of what it is. So we're going to save and restart. Then we're going to go back over to the console and we're going to type M119 and press enter. So now it is open. Now we have another problem where we actually have to set the actual sensitivity for the actual driver. So what that is, is over in here, there's a value that we have to set. It's called, hang on, let me find it here, driver strength, I believe. So I have to scroll through here and see if I can find it. So it's probably this one right here. So we're gonna have to try this. Hopefully I got it right, but it says that it's zero. Now this value could be something else other than zero. So let me just scroll through and make sure that there's nothing else for driver strength because sometimes they have slightly different names between each configuration. So as you can see, I don't see anything different. So what we'll do is we'll paste that in in just a second and see what happens. It might be spelled slightly different. Um, it varies between each one of the steppers. So let's go over and try that real quick. So let's see, we have to go to configuration, printers, and then down in here, we have to add this value in, which is gonna be this. So let's save that. Then we're gonna go over to the actual console and we're gonna try and home the X axis. So let's click on home for X axis and see what happens. So let me bring it up so you can actually see what I'm talking about here. So let's click home. And so it doesn't seem to work correctly. So the reason that is, is that it says the end stop is triggered after retraction. So let's change the value in here. And so we need to change this to, let's try eight and then save and restart. And then give that a try again. Okay, that's uh, not sensitive enough, so we're gonna do a motors off. And we're gonna have to go in here and we're gonna have to adjust it down. So the correct value that I found for my setup is actually, I believe, two. So let's do a save and restart. And then we'll go back up over here. And we'll try it again after I move this to the center and see what happens. So that's pretty good. So now that that is working, we can actually test the movement. So as you can see, it moves approximately 100 millimeters. So if you like my tutorial, please press the like button and subscribe, and I'll place a thank you note at the end for my patrons and the people that have donated on PayPal. So thank you very much and take care.